Hey everyone, we've all got a dirty secret tucked away in a cupboard somewhere, right? Well, this is my dirty secret. It's a laptop. Anticlimactic, I know. Basically, I purchased this six years ago. I wanted 16 gigs of RAM without spending a fortune, so I purchased a custom build from PC Specialist. And on paper, it has a lot of promise. It has a decent 8th gen Intel CPU, an NVMe SSD with 2 gigabit read speeds, and it has various ports including USB 3, headphone and microphone jacks, USB-C, display inputs, an Ethernet port, and an SD card reader. That ain't bad for a fairly budget laptop. I intended to use this machine for video editing, and while PC Specialist did a good enough job building it, the end result left me very disappointed. PC Specialists actually use Clevo, a Taiwanese OEM laptop manufacturer who provide bare-bone builds to PC manufacturers. Unfortunately, this laptop ended up having loads of weird issues. Windows 10 seemed allergic to it, to be honest, and also the fans would get really loud, even when opening something simple like Notepad. Also, Windows 10 would randomly decide that my battery was empty, give me a low battery warning, and then shut down five seconds later. Gee, thanks, Windows. In the end, I dual booted with Ubuntu 20, which had no issues with the battery, and I also installed a package which allowed me to manually control fan speeds, which worked quite well. However, I still wanted to do video editing, and Linux isn't really ideal for this. I did try DaVinci Resolve, but it ran really, really slowly. So I put this in a cupboard and forgot about it. Until now. I'm so cool. Even though this is a fairly budget laptop, can I solve the various Windows issues and make it a video editor machine after all? Well, the first thing I actually did was look to get Ubuntu upgraded from the unsupported version 20 to the latest LTS release, which is now 22.04. While I do plan on mainly using Windows on here, I always like having quick access to a Linux OS, so keeping the dual boot made sense to me, especially if Windows continue to hate this laptop. Luckily, upgrading was a fairly straightforward process, and it's pretty awesome that you can do this in place without needing to download boot media and then messing around with UFI boot menus. After about 20 minutes or so, the main part of the upgrade was complete, and Ubuntu then prompted me to clean up all of the old, obsolete packages. Then, it was all complete, and I could restart. Woohoo! Sorry about the dirty screen, though. I logged in and confirmed that Ubuntu had been updated to the latest long-term stable version. Awesome! I then updated Chrome, which was four years out of date. Whoops. Because, you know, I'm weird, and I use Chrome even on an open platform like Linux. Sorry. With all that done, I then turned my attention back to Windows. My general plan was to try and install Windows 11 because I had so many issues previously with Windows 10 that I thought it best just to have a clean break with a different version. However, I needed to check compatibility first. So I held my breath <laughs> and I booted back into Windows 10. I left the laptop plugged in because otherwise Windows would have randomly shut down complaining of an empty battery. And thankfully, I was actually able to check whether this laptop supported Windows 11. It did not. Last, I googled the CPU and it was listed on the Windows 11 good list though, so I decided to enter the BIOS just to check. This is a proper old school BIOS, no mouse support, it's no fancy colours, it just has blue, grey and white noise. It doesn't have many configuration options at all, to be honest, but it does have secure boot settings and it mentions TPM. After some back and forth and me getting confused about why it said none right after enabling security device support, is that a bad thing? I then decided to boot back into Windows 10 and double check if this had worked. The keyboard stopped working. I could move the mouse, but I couldn't actually log in. Nothing worked, nada. I couldn't even make the login form appear. As I said, Windows 10 is just allergic to this machine. Eventually though, I did manage to get back in and I was able to then confirm that this laptop does now support Windows 11. Woohoo! So, I used this desktop PC to create a Windows 11 installed USB and then I booted into this from my laptop to start the reinstall process. When it came to entering the product key, I couldn't actually find the key for the old Windows 10 install, and all the command line options kept returning not applicable, weirdly. I did actually pay for a version, so I don't know why I'd done that. Anywho, luckily I found a random Windows 7 key lying around on my NAS, and Windows 11 seemed to just accept this. Nice. I went with a custom Windows install because I did not want any trace of the previous cursed Windows 10 install to remain. I actually went gung-ho and I deleted every partition I could find, other than the 56 gig one, which is for my Ubuntu dual boot. The installer kept popping up with warnings, but I kept ignoring them, determined to purge Windows 10 completely. I might have accidentally corrupted the dual boot loader here, but better safe than sorry. The Windows 11 install then ran as normal, copying and installing all the files, then going through the long-winded process of spamming you with hopeful messages like, getting ready and just a moment which each seemed to last like half an hour. 
finally it burst into life and I could then finish setting up Windows 11, choosing the language and keyboard layout. After entering the Wi-Fi details and also naming my computer, I had another just a moment loader. And then another spinner, then another just a moment loader. Is this all a bad sign? Will Windows 11 be too slow for my laptop? Anywho, I then did some final install bits and skipped some more spammy offers and finally it was getting things ready for me. Ah, apparently this might take a few minutes. I forgot how long winded the process was. Anywho, after what felt like an age, I finally had a working Windows 11 install and I did all the usual things like kicking off a manual Windows update check and also changing the display scale to my liking because I hate how it defaults to 150% zoom on small screens. I then opened Edge with the sole purpose of downloading Chrome, of course. And after carefully reading and ignoring Microsoft's messages about how amazing Edge is, I then downloaded Chrome. It was then just a case of installing some of the usual software that I always use while monitoring the Windows update and restarting my PC when it was convenient. I always like to have Windows fairly updated, I guess. After a few rounds of restarts, I was pretty much set, finally. At this point, Windows 11 already felt snappier and smoother than Windows 10 did, which was a big relief. It just seemed to all work a bit better. The fans were a little bit loud, but not excessively so. They used to make an absolute racket with Windows 10 for some reason. Also, the computer didn't randomly shut down with battery warnings, which is nice. So, I was cautiously optimistic about everything, but I'd already spotted a few issues, including that the touchpad scroll function just wasn't working, and also that the Wi-Fi speed was slow. I have a 500 meg download uh, for my ISP, but this laptop was only getting a tenth of that if I was lucky, so clearly I had some work to do before I could properly use this laptop for video editing. Looking at the touchpad issue, first, basically you can use two fingers to scroll up and down on a laptop, assuming it works, of course. In my case, or in the laptop's case, Windows 11 must not have found the drivers for this. Luckily, one of Clever's websites still listed the drivers, so I was able to look them up and download the latest version from 2018. After extracting the files, it wasn't really clear what file I needed to run. I eventually decided that setupinf was correct, and this completed successfully, apparently, but the trackpad still wasn't working. Mm. Okay, I then tried running the largest exe in the folder and it did something. So I restarted and success. I was then able to use the trackpad again. I'm lucky that Clevo still has these drivers listed because some of the links on Clevo's site was actually giving me four or four errors. I'll be sure to back up these touchpad drivers somewhere safe for the future. Next up, I wanted to do a quick health check on the system. So I used a mix of HW Monitor and Crystal Disk Mark to check things over. HW Monitor showed that the temperatures were generally fairly good with the CPU temps fairly decent. At load, the CPU temps might hit 90 degrees Celsius, which is high, but not excessively so, considering that this is a fairly thin laptop without any fancy cooling system. The battery also isn't massively depleted, which is reassuring. Turn into Crystal Disk Mark, and the disk read and write speeds are actually fairly fast and pretty much as advertised too, which is good to see. So nothing is massively wrong here either. So that was all reassuring. But that meant fixing the next issue, the slow Wi-Fi speeds. I originally noticed this problem because I tried copying some video files from my NAS to the laptop, but speeds were 8 or 9 times slower than they were on my desktop PC. I ran a speed test on here and I was only getting 50 megabits per second, even though I have a 500 meg download speed and the Intel 8265 Wi-Fi card in the laptop should support speeds up to 867 megabits per second. As a result, I downloaded the latest drivers for the Wi-Fi card and installed them in the usual way. Unfortunately, internet speeds continue to be slow after restarting, getting 50 megs on 2.4 gigahertz and around 80 megs or so on 5 gigahertz. This might seem fast to some people, but I get 500 meg speeds on all my other devices, even on my smartphone, so I still wanted to try and solve this problem if I could. As a result, I got out my box of old networking crap, as my wife calls it, and tried out various Wi-Fi adapters. Unfortunately, I had no luck with these either, with both the TP Max and Eddy Max Wi-Fi USB adapters getting 20 megabits per second or less, even though they actually both supported much more than this, which was curious. I wanted to check that I wasn't going mad, or more mad than I already am, so I booted into Ubuntu and tried out there. It worked quite well, getting 200 megs download speeds with no issues. Hmm. So this is still technically lower than the Intel Wi-Fi card supports, I guess. But I'm happy enough to get over 200 megs on a 6 year old laptop, especially because this was over 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. So it's all a bit weird. I did actually try plugging this in with an Ethernet cable too, and then got pretty good speeds as well. Leading me to believe that this problem is some sort of weird conflict between Windows 11 and the Intel card drivers. Unfortunately, there's no obvious solution here, but it's fast with Ethernet and also with Ubuntu, so that's kind of good enough for me right now. 
At this point, I wanted to test out whether there's any hope of video editing on this six-year-old mid-range Intel CPU, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. I was able to open and use Premiere Pro, and it was all fairly smooth. I was able to make changes and apply effects, and then play them back without any real delay, which was great. This was 4K footage too, so being able to handle this on this particular laptop is pretty awesome in my opinion. I do most of my video editing on a 12 core Ryzen, and while that's naturally going to be faster in general, I do actually get some stutters and freezes, especially with playback, but having an Intel CPU which supports QuickSync, like in this laptop, actually means that video editing is going to be a bit of a smoother experience in general than with an AMD CPU. Anywho, I decided to try out a final render video export of this project, and it was slow, which was expected. Because rendering is a very CPU heavy task, and this only has a 4 core CPU after all. After waiting 30 minutes, I was just over halfway through, but then it crashed because the display went to sleep. Whoops. After tweaking the Windows power mode, the export ran well, and after an hour and a half of waiting, it finally finished. Nice. There was no corruption or issues with the final export, so that's actually a pretty promising sign. While my 12 core Ryzen CPU only takes six and a half minutes to render this project, it's worth remembering that this is a six year old budget laptop and it was never really designed or expected to render 4K video files. It was still workable though, and it gives me confidence that I could use this as a backup 4K video editing system or as a primary 1080p video editing PC, which is actually pretty cool. Before testing out gaming performance, I wanted to try and tackle the fan noise issue. While the fans do seem quieter overall on Windows 11, they can still get pretty loud at times. Clevo apparently run a fairly aggressive fan curve, which kind of makes sense, but it can be a bit over the top at times too. When I looked into this issue six years ago, there's a program called RLEC Viewer, but I remember it not working at all for some reason. Thankfully, a new program has come out since then called Clevo Fan Controller. It was easy enough to install. You firstly need to download and install NT port DRV setup, and then you just need to run the fan control application. This thankfully worked. Woohoo! I mean, I could finally end the scourge of noisy Clevo fans. This program has a few config options and setting it to 50% speed is often quieter than the Clevo default, for example. You can also draw your own fan curves, which is pretty nice. I was pretty happy to find this program because six years ago, I actually checked all this out a bunch of times and looked at loads of different options, but nothing was working, which is why I originally actually moved this laptop to Ubuntu 20. I'm now in a much nicer position though. I have quieter fans, no random Windows shutdowns due to battery issues. I have a working touchpad and the ability to sort of edit 4K video if I wanted. As a result, I decided to push things further and try out gaming. That will clearly work well too, right? Joking aside, I knew that integrated graphics from six years ago wasn't exactly impressive, so I didn't bother installing a recent AAA game or anything like that. I decided to try out Rocket League though, and with the default 1080p settings, I was getting 15 FPS. Yikes. So I checked out the graphical settings of course and many were enabled so I disabled pretty much every optional setting and also disabled anti-aliasing. This then led to a 25 to 30 fps frame rate which is actually pretty decent considering that this is 1080p gaming on a budget six year old laptop. As you can see here the bottleneck here is actually the integrated graphics. The other part of the CPU main bit is barely being used and there's also 40% unused RAM. This is entirely expected though, and I'm fairly happy that it's sort of possible to play 1080 games on this laptop, if I needed to. All in all, I'm actually pretty happy to have revived this old laptop. I literally had stuck it in a cupboard and barely used it because Windows 10 was just so rubbish on it. The random shutdowns, glitches and ultra loud fans made using the laptop completely painful. While Ubuntu 20 was smoother, admittedly, I wasn't really able to edit video on it, which was one of the main reasons that I purchased this in the first place. But now it's a whole new machine. I feel like I'm on those dodgy home renovation TV shows. It seems pretty smooth and it's kind of surprising to me that Windows 11 actually runs better than Windows 10, considering that everyone says how Windows 11 is laggy and unperformant. However, I actually think that Windows 11 cutting support for so many older CPUs and systems is actually a benefit here, because they could cut out some of the cruft under the hood and focus on optimizing the operating system for a smaller subset of hardware. It certainly seems to have helped in this case anyway. Anywho, I'm happy, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Was it worth spending hours of my time reviving a six-year-old system, or have you done something similar yourself? Please let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.